seconds underway, so we're probably going to get a bit of a match slightly earlier than expected, which is fantastic. It means we can stop talking crap, start talking games. Better. Yeah. On, on a serious note, I think uh, Quacker and Shadow have the significant advantage in terms of ELO, so I definitely yeah. favor them. But, they do, they do you have know. the ELO advantage, yeah. And as everybody knows, the the uh, kind of defining factor to winning a game is, is, is peak, peak ELO, ELO, right? So Shadow <laughs> has the peak ELO advantage, which means it's pretty much impossible for Flight and Papai to win this one. Yeah, I agree. But, guys, we've got a game on our hands. Let me flip over. I know you want to just keep looking at Julian's face for a little bit longer, but uh, unfortunately, it's time for the game. Oh, redraw. Redraw Ooh. from Black. Lights on the cash out. Shadow and Papai still undecided. There's the cash out on Shadow. I always wonder why it takes people so long, especially in tournament games, because you, you have a plan going in, right? Yeah. You have a plan, don't you? Maybe it's like, check the spells and see what happens, or, you know, like, see what your mate's role is like. So Papai's gone YOLO, which is fantastic, by the way. Big brass balls to go for YOLO in tournaments. Um, but maybe he was like, Flight, you go in, you check what your role's like. If your role is good, then I'll risk the YOLO. If your role is bad, then I'll play something a bit more consistent. Yeah, maybe. Or he just was AFK and just came back in time. Who knows? Oh. Will we see snails? Will we see snails? Oh. Oh. I mean, two snails on one pretty much just wins the game here for Quacker and Shadow. However... They've gone for kingdoms. Ay, ay, ay. And flights and papai, they're tryharding. Oh, they're disgusting. saving Mythium. And I've oh. been reliably informed that saving Mythium has absolutely 100% no counter. <laughs> yeah. You <laughs> save for like five waves in a row and your win percentage is at least 120%. At right? least 120%. And I don't care what any good player says. Yeah. Alright, so we are going to get the 40 send here from Flight onto Shadow, but Shadow is cash out with his Crusher, which means he can add 90 here, and if he just goes for, you know, Windhawk or Warg, there's just zero chance of him leaking here, I think. Yeah, if he if he goes Aqua and the Tier 1 in the split, he would leak to uh, the 40 DT, cent. but with not the... to Double Snail. The Fire Archer should hold a 40 cent, right? I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. Fire Archer holds a 40 cent, basically, when you're four workers. Yeah, but he's five workers. He is five workers. Because of Kasha. What a tryhard. Yeah. Oh, the thing is not tanking very nah, well, it's though, fine. but it's, it's just it's, fine, yeah. It's just the fine. DPS is too high. Yeah, yeah. He put it there in case he gets a DT, so the DT and, like, one creep go on the Fire Archer, yeah. so it still lives. Um. But he's always fine, and he's probably gonna go seven workers now and put tremendous amounts of pressure onto yeah. Papai, who's very weak on wave four so far. A Papai, and he can't really do anything about it either. The best he can hope for is maybe like a Sea Dragon or something, but it's really not all that. Well, yeah, he has two options. The first one is the good option, which is press this blue cube button, which yeah. gives him four new fighters. Ooh, that sounds interesting. But uh, if he does not do that, then he should shift here and get a Harbinger on wave three, uh, yeah. wave four. Well, this... Shadow did not go seven workers. He actually added an Aqua. Imagine mm. overbuilding. Yeah, and I, I don't understand. I don't really agree with that decision because Flight can't send him too much. But and he, Quacker he saved. Forted, and I think a forty would have leaked. Uh, Two units? Yeah, probably. So he's probably just playing safe. Like this, how is Flight doing against the DT send? It looks like he's going to be pretty fine. And obviously, Papai is holding here against the no send. The next wave where he's starting to be in a bit of trouble. Yeah, Shadow and... does go seven workers now, by the way, yeah. after this snail send. Yeah, Flight did reroll. Uh, I don't know if he changed any of his units. Papai has not rerolled so far, and I think that's a big mistake because he's really going to 
Yeah, he's be in trouble here. He's on a rough one here, and he doesn't even get to add like a a hardened mudman or something, which would be pretty good. Like he could just yeah. tank the dino forever with a hardened mudman. Ah, he rerolled. He rerolled. I don't know what oh. he got though. I can't see it. Uh, oh no, uh, don't run out of time! Don't serpent. make the bunny! Oh, he can't add a bazooka though. Oh no, 44 gold! Oh. Ah! That's just ugly gold for him with his YOLO roll. No tier 1 obviously makes it hard for you to spend all of your gold. Yeah, that's why the game coach always gets it. Oh no! He's just gonna leak everything. Oh, that's good tanking though! Yeah. But he's, he's gonna penny leak the dino, no? He is. I think he can't kill it. Oh. Rough. And to, fly it I, I with the cover. The, I think if the dino went onto the serpent, he's just leaking like over 100% though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's still a decent least... aggro for him and nice cover, teammate. Very yeah. good. And Shadow Wings, nine workers after the additional income sent. He's really oh, wow. pushing hard here. Shadow's about to snowball to the face of the moon, dude. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't know if Popeye can recover from this, you know. He's getting a Brood resend, he's getting... Ah, he's not getting the 40 out. But he so it's only going to be an 80. But he will get a snail with a Brood and Popeye. What's his answer? He's got 90 gold. He probably just has to add another steed. He does. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. That's not enough. The Serpent oh, is dead value. The steeds get ruined by the Brood. He, yeah. The Sea Dragon doesn't really have a good target to heal. I don't, I don't see him holding here. No. But Maybe at least fly test the cannon, right? Yeah, this time Maybe he uses his pack rat's ability at some point as well? He probably doesn't know the pack rat has an ability. Ah, fair. Alright, and they are starting to put the starve on to Quacker and Shadow. So if I look at these builds, I mean, if I look at Shadow's build, it's got Wave 7 written all over it. Quacker's obviously a lot stronger there with his archer, with his Nekamata. Hmm. Yeah. But I think this is just too much gold that they are losing by leaking I mean, and the long waves with the work worker disadvantage. I well, don't think... I actually did okay here. Like 53%, it could have been yeah. a lot worse. Yeah, but I think Shadow is going to stabilize from income alone right yeah. now. Yeah, he is. He's just going to be on value pretty much whenever Flight decides to send. Yeah. So that Ooh. early aggressive push there from Shadow going nine workers on four really paying off for him. Yeah, and the cannoneer from Papai giving up all the pressure that he had. Yeah. Uh, Quacker is going to hold easily because he has the Harbinger. Well, Quacker is doing what Quacker does best, which is overbuilding like a madman. So he's plus 30 here after being saved for a couple of waves. 690 value. And he obviously yeah. doesn't need to build next, which means he'll add 100. <laughs> That's typically how he plays, yes, <laughs> I agree. Shadow right. did go for the Violet here because he was scared, and Flight yeah. did decide to save and hunt. So now Ooh, he's under threat he found of the ability. Yeah. That's impressive. I thought Flight had had the T key surgically removed from his keyboard, but apparently not. Yeah, maybe not. I don't know if the Canopy wins against four Rockos, though. He's not pushing anything, though. Oh, Papai! Papai no! no! Oh, and no! Flight leaks as well. Ah, uh, oh no! Uh, oh, oh dear! No. That's uh, yeah. This is this is what you were saying, dude. Like they're just hemorrhaging gold now. Every time they leak, it's more gold on the side of Quacker and Shadow. And what's more is Papai let his foot off the pressure there as well with the income send against Quacker. Uh, so if you're going to income send, you kind of need to hold as well. You can't income send oh. and then leak sixty-seven percent. And also, I didn't see it, but I see it now. Papai sold a steed last wave for a butcher. Oof. He had a steed here. He did. He, he got this, it. and yeah. he still leaked four creeps. So Quacker and Shadow already on fire. So maybe the mimic can leak Shadow. So you know, yeah. there's, sh there's a shutdown. And Flight did sell his pack red, which he hunted once and then instantly leaked. So now he sold it oh, for no, a buck. He sold it. Yeah. <laughs> he's learned his lesson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Swedish pawn shop. Yeah, but hopefully Shadow leaks here. It is a 220 send, it is a Mimic and a Brute. So this is some much needed shutdown for the side of Flight and Papai. And a decent chunk of gold on the Mimic as well. It's last hitting everything. 
Look at that. 18 shut gold down. Merit, 25 gold shut down. That is a juicy send there from Flight TV. Yeah, but I think it's just too little too late, probably. You know, look at the workers. It's 10 workers for Quacker and Shadow and 8 for Flight and Papai. Yeah, it's a rough one. But Quacker now forcing to income send. He's feeling a little bit scared. Next wave wants to make sure he can get his Trinity Archer online. Um, if Papai decides to save again, this might be dangerous for Quacker, and he does. So Flight has a second bunk now on wave 8. Interesting, interesting. I mean, he's obviously holding the income send of Quacker. I'd maybe prefer him to have, you know, some workers, perhaps? I mean, he's minus 40. How do you expect him to push? Rude. Um. I mean, he's only able to push one worker for every 40 Mythium he receives, right? So... Yeah, true, true, true. But I assume he'll push four workers now, or five workers, sorry. He did get the DT there last second, so Flight now going to be able to push up to 13 workers off of this end. And Papai, I wonder if this Papai Hermit... pretty heavily. Yeah, I don't think this Hermit is really going to threaten. No, him. he's got way too much value. He's 970 yeah. value here with Coiler, with uh, Pegasus. He's easy holding. Flight obviously holds the 200 income send as well. So far only pushed four. He needs to push one after income as well. Otherwise he'll be failing his own rule. And he does 13 workers. Amazing. Oh, no, 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 no. Over push. Over oh, push. Over push. Flight oh, TV. no. That's rule number one, dude. And look at Quacker's value. Look at Quacker's value. How much value can you get? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's plus He's 40. shifting 60 gold. No. 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 Oh. Build the mud, man. Thank you. Does he harden? No. no. He ran out of 220 time. 220 send, and the Trinity's pretty bad, but obviously the harbinger is very good, and the mud men, they're pretty good as well. Yeah, I'm so not sure to... if... He needs to get the wave on top of the Harbinger, but I think he's about to get the third summon, and that's just too much value. He's not going to leak. Yeah, I was going to say, um, here are imps on oh, this Shadow was post Slane. Income, post income I imps from think the those, were imp those were post income, but I'm not 100% sure, but I think they were. Yeah. Shadow and Quack are both on fire. 50 gold shot down on Shadow Wings. I've and... never seen a 50 gold shot down on wave 10 before. Well, I have seen it, but not on Shadow. But I think he might manage to feed it instantly here. Because He's if we look at his lane, yeah. <laughs> he does not have any good units. I don't know, maybe He's he holds one. the no send. No one. True, true. Hey, I think no send is his only hope to not feed the shutdown here. And 50 gold is decent. Well. Yeah, that's half of the venture that's in the game. You know? Know? Yeah, the Alpha Male's still alive and the boss is at 50%. I think he's just got enough value to survive yeah. it. But like a single Dino probably changes things. Yeah, absolutely. Like, look, this is this is still close. Yeah. Kind of close. The thing is, um, there's Venture in the game. So obviously it was impossible pretty much for Flight and Papai to send on 10, despite Shadow being very weak there. Ooh, everyone is venturing, and I don't know that it's everyone the perfect decision for Papai and Flight. Uh, I mean, Flight's putting 40 into his Orchid there. Sorry, 20. And um, counting is not my strong suit. Yeah. 24 now. I mean, with the income send, I think Flight is going to be fine. Papai has enough value, and, yeah, uh, and the Harden Mudman and, and the Life yeah, Blind should, should be good, yeah. Pretty like ballsy for Flight and Papaya to venture here. This might be one of those we're pretty behind, so let's just risk it. Yeah. And They'll be happy with the income All Income sense. King against Shadow and Quacker as well. Papai holding against the 300 send. Flight TV, oh. with his 24 gold oh. boost, by the oh, way, no. is not holding. I mean, the three king-ups really ruined him. Yeah, the three king-ups was just the icing on the cake. It was just too much for him. 
But how much did he receive there? 260 Mythian, so that's six and a half workers he needs to push now. Yeah. I did not see... He was on 14, right? I think he was okay. on 14 because he overpushed. So now 18... he needs to go to 20. Oh. Right. Where's the 20.5 workers, dude? Come on. Come on. Hmm. Mm. All right. Shadow's still on his 50 gold shutdown. Uh, 239 gold shift. But he's very strong here. Maybe he thinks he picked Predator. Maybe. It happens to me all the time that I think I have Creditor and then I have Venture and the other way around. Yeah, I, so. I normally get the opposite where I pick Creditor and then forget I have Creditor and then don't yeah. shift any gold. Yeah. And then you get pinged angrily by your teammate. Yeah. Yeah, that's... But honestly, my teammates should just be happy that I'm carrying them the whole time, you know? Yeah, fair. Alright, <sighs> is anybody going to go for a 13 cent? I wonder Please if don't. Dark and Shadow read the venture from Flight and Papaya. Yeah, they they have to read it. Like just from power score alone. Um they know they didn't take Xavier. They don't have good targets for Divine Blessing. And they didn't jump in power score, so they can easily deduce that this is venture because yeah. they are good players. So Oh this Shadow's be fine. roll, man. Dirty. Popping yeah. out the Phoenix on 13 for both Dark and Shadow. But Shadow has the Leviathan as well, which is just a disgusting combo. Mind you, Quacker has the APS, which is pretty solid for the Leviathan, for the uh, Phoenix and the Trinity Archer. I think both I'm a of bit... these guys are just going to scale yeah. really hard. The only thing, if there's one thing that worries Shadow and Quacker, is that they both added a Phoenix. And the send is most likely coming 14. And Phoenix is not known to be the best unit on wave 14 with its magic damage. They're both just going to be so far overvalued though. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. And there's only Ooh. income coming and they just save, so... Yeah. Okay, this game is really starting to feel hard now for Flight and Papaya. Because after this income send, Dark and Shadow, they can either just push Giga hard and go for a kill on, say, 16, which I think is a good play. Yeah. Or I, they can do whatever they want. Like, there's no pressure against them after this income send. The, the ball really is in their court. They can send when they want. They can push when they want. They can not push and save longer. Just whatever they want to do. They, the world really is their oyster at this stage. Yeah. With Shadow, it's typically the save longer option. Um, but now that he gets 460 Mythium, he has to push 11 and a half workers. Yeah. So let's see if he goes for it or not. His Phoenix is actually dying, by the way, against the income send. Imagine if this was like four eyes. Yeah, but you really need double four eyes, and yeah, 460 is enough, yeah. not enough. Not enough. We have both yeah. players easily chomping up the income sends here. They are going for the push workers option, which is good. Yeah. Shadow not quite pushing 11 and a half, though, so somebody hasn't been watching his Flight TV YouTube videos. Yeah, I think he should really go back and watch the guides that uh, Flight TV puts out there. Ooh! Pyro! Pyro? Nice. Hidden Pyro? Crouching Tiger Five Hidden minutes. Pyro. Nice. Well, but He'll need to is... sell his split on 60, or at least do like a clumper tank or something, you know? Yeah, and even then, like even if he holds, Flight is just leaking everything, and if Pyro is bad at one thing, it is covering. Mm, yeah. So I think they are still in a lot of trouble. And Flight and Quacker don't need to kill them on 16. It's totally fine if they deal like 70% king damage. Oh, yeah. yeah and then yeah. just go like 18 or 19 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Shadow now on 100 gold shutdown. Quacker on 75. Oh, L1. Oh, the Centaur L1. into Pyro. Is that, sir? That's an interesting decision. A double Centaur. A Centaur from both. I mean, I, I can kind has... of get the Centaur onto Flight, because he's got a lot of Arcane Swift stuff. Yeah, yeah, upgrade the King Attack, guys. It's very good against the Swarm Wave, especially huh? when you have AoE units. Papaya, you, uh, need to, you need to kill the Split, dude, one way or another. Yeah, yeah, sold one. Uh, no, 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 no. No. Uh, 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 
he, uh, it, it's just it's going to ah! kill him. His pylons oh! are going to deal half damage. He's not even hardening. Oh! Light TV is going for the 60 gold shurikens there. Uh oh. 900 oh. Mythium walks oh. into the lane. Well, at least the split died quickly, so now the pyros are attacking everything. But... Yeah. And now the wave splits onto the coilers, so the pyros are not attacking everything anymore. So, so he holds, right? Yeah. Easy hold. Easy hold. Uh, Easy. Flight TV 154% leak, Papai 128% leak. This may not be lethal, but oh, it also lethal. might be lethal. This is lethal. I mean, it's a 50 50, right? It's either lethal or it's not. Exactly. exactly. Uh, Shadow and Quacker just See. winning the 50 50 there. Victory, Victory yeah. in game number one. So a 1 0 lead on the side of Rubber Ducky. Not just Lucky a 1 0 lead, but also the, the moral lead with their superior team name. Yeah, exactly. And if we just look at the graph, like Rubber Ducky, they were ahead pretty much the entire game there from start to yeah. finish. Like there's a little dip on one, which I think is just caused by cash out. Um, but the story of the game was pretty one sided, I think. Like this big, big leak on four against Papai, re leaking on five against the, the, the 80 resend, leaking on six as well. That was a yikes. Like both of them leaking to a fiend on six. And then, sure, Shadow gets wrecked on seven, but just too little, too late, as you said. Both of them holding the big wave nine sends. Kind of still ballsy from Flight and Papai to go venture on 11. I did like that play from them, so respect to kind of playing for their outs. But it just wasn't yep. enough. And then this income send on 14 really sealed the deal. Dark and Shadow can just do whatever they want, and it turns out whatever they wanted was winning on 16. So, well played, those guys. Yeah, GG. But now the new format comes into, oh. into play. They have and to choose a means... different option. Yeah, and Dark Quacker is a one-trick pony with redraw. Yeah. He cannot play if he does not have the perfect role. Ooh. So now we we are waiting to see what he will pick and if he can manage to roll the six or seven perfect units with his roll and reroll. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be a rough one because as you say, it's literally impossible for him to play if he doesn't have the perfect roll. But yeah. is, isn't any roll the perfect roll if you have enough value? Well, yes. All right, so it turns out that Papai has just gone for a uh, comfort break, if you like. So we've got a couple of minutes now before our next uh, game. Yeah, I mean, I can swap in. I, I mean, I don't know. Like maybe Flight wants a chance to win. Mm. But then he should swap himself out, I think. Yeah, true. All right, I'm just reminding the teams about the Conquest format. So for anyone in the chat while we're waiting for Papai to get back in the game, the new Conquest format is inspired by the Shadow Cup that was uh, played out last weekend. And it basically means that after winning with one Mastermind option, the teams have to choose a different one. So Dark Quacker won with Redraw, Shadow Wings won with Cash Out. That means Shadow now cannot play Cash Out again and Quacker cannot play Redraw again. They can play any of the other masterminds, they just can't play with one that they've won with. Yeah, exactly. And it's like player specific. So Quacker can still pick Cash Out, but Shadow can also and Shadow can pick Redraw, but Shadow yeah. can't pick Cash Out and Quacker can't pick Redraw. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Light and Papai, obviously, they can pick whatever they want. Conquest only kicks in once you've won a game, and it just kind of narrows your pool, and it kind of forces players then a little bit out of their comfort zone, so those Giga tryhards who only ever play Greed are going to have to uh, experiment with different Mastermind options, which I think is very good for the game. Yeah, I really like it. Um, hmm. I think true like mastery of the game shows that you can play in any situation with yeah. any given cards. Yeah. So you can play... With an amazing role, you can play from ahead, you can play with a shit role, you can play from behind, you can play with different options. And I think this is what really separates the good players from the great players. Yeah, exactly. Just a bit of versatility. Um, and honestly, the Shadow Cup last weekend was just a lot of fun. Like, I really enjoyed yeah. the new format. Uh, obviously, his format was a bit more detailed, but it's nice to just introduce like a, a slimmed-down version of that um, 
into the Nova Cup, I think. So we're kind of testing it out in Division 1 this month, and if it's successful, then we'll make it permanent and maybe roll it out to the other divisions as well. Yeah, I think this is more of a Division 1 thing, probably, but... Yeah. It probably doesn't make as much difference in the lower divisions, and to be yeah. fair, like you can't necessarily expect someone who's maybe in gold elo or something like that to force themselves to play different uh, mastermind options where if they're division one players well you can expect them to do that so yeah exactly and i think in the it's also the thing that in division one like players are so good that they can adjust to mastermind options and play them in a different way whereas in lower divisions probably picking a different mastermind option would not necessarily result in a very different play style. Exactly. exactly. Whereas, yeah, like you say, so in Division 1, different Mastermind options can have a pretty big impact on the pace of the game. Yeah, exactly. Let's see if we see some Fiesta today. Oh, I would love some Fiesta. Now, Shadow actually does play a decent amount of Fiesta on the ladder. So if anyone's <laughs> going to do it, I think it might be Shadow. Trying to I think get it's... the uh, light adjusted on my camera is just not working. So luckily the players decide to start the game and we can get out of this uh, darkened camera that I just can't seem to escape. So guys, game number two. Let's go. Yeah. Castle. Castle on the quacker. Okay. So Shadow, I would say, has to play something with a bit more tempo to try and cover the castle's slow start. So, you know, either Cartel or YOLO, something like this. Cartel. So Flight, Flight and Papai stick to their guns. It's Cash Out and YOLO. And Shadow does go for that Cartel. So he's planning to cover his mate's weakness. And honestly, they're kind of both covering their weaknesses, right? So Shadow can just push really hard in the early game and try to scale. And Quacker will get that castle income kicking in after 10. Um... Or vice versa, like they can play super, super staff with the extra income, which is maybe what Shadow will go. Yeah, but if Quacker uh, gets a good game, he has a carry role. He has the Ocean Templar Gates with Magician, yeah. which is really strong if you're ahead. And... and there is Magician, yeah, there's nothing like Hero, I think, is better, but Magician yes. is still very, very good on that. And he even has the Disciple as well. The problem is, he's kind of lacking in tanks. Yeah, um, but he can still reroll. Yeah, I mean, all you need for the first five waves is Gun and Gargoyle anyway, so like he's sorted until then. Yeah. I want to point out that Flight is starting Zeus with Cash Out despite having Bone Crusher and Aqua, which <laughs> I think is a mistake because Bone Crusher, five workers, is such a strong opening. It really uh, is. Especially if you expect them to king up because you can almost always go six workers then, and it's really, really strong. And I think. Yeah. Especially given that they are the weaker players on paper, you should try to take early advantages, even oh, if it means you gamble a bit. Yeah, just take some risks, and like they're they're one zero behind as well, so why not? You know, like just go all in, go for the high variance plays. If it works, you win a game. If it doesn't, well, you know, you're kind of unfavored anyway, right? Exactly. Why it's got the ogre monument, by the way? Very good looking statue there. Obviously not as good as the golden legion king, but it's not bad. Yeah, at least he has something going for him. Yeah. Right, Double so snail into a flower. Here. I mean, I don't think Oof. it's going to work. Do you know if um, flower and 210 value holds a double snail? I'm not sure. Well, it depends. I had a teammate earlier that managed to leak on wave 3 to a DT with flower with 210 value. What where an the idiot. flower is stronger. What an idiot. Yeah. Who could that have been? I don't know. I mean, I know that he had two anglers positioned behind the flower, and it was a bit of a clown, so I don't oh. know. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like a bit of a clown. All right, Flight going for the uh, the Ranger with his Zeus. I mean, that, that is a good combo. Yeah. Yeah, there's the Bone Crusher, but you have to build it on wave one flight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, uh, but that's because we're streaming with delay, so you only heard me now. Yes. <laughs> All right. So I think with his two eight five value, he can just about hold the snail on three, and Quacker, who very skillfully rolled gargoyles with his gun, will also be able to hold the triple snail on three himself. Shadow going six workers, staying two ten value after getting the double snail on two. Pretty nice start for him. 
But all four players actually on six workers, so Flight and Papai, determined not to uh, let Shadow and Quacko run away with this one. Yeah, and Quacko is staying six workers. He could push seven here with the gun and gargoyles, but it's a bit risky because Papai has six workers and he can probably resend two snails, but it doesn't leak too bad to two snails. Three snails, however, absolutely ruins gun plus two gargoyles on four. Hmm. So, But he only gets he... two, which is less than three. Does he does he build? No, he just yeah. shifts sixty okay. gold, okay. Alright, I think so let's have this a look. leaks. I think this leaks, but not massively. He's got the pretty good tank between the goggles, but now everything's on the gun. This should be a decent leak actually. Yeah. Okay, nice call yeah. flight TV. Forty two percent there on Quacker with the double snail. That is it was bang for buck. Pie. The pie? I think Sorry. Pie they they changed that, lanes. Yeah. lanes yeah. Oh, yeah. Shadow with the Hermit on five. The Pi might be in trouble. I don't think he's got any hope of getting the Orchid, but he can add the Pilgrim, which I think is decent on wave five. Uh, it's the best unit for wave five, but it's not great with Fire Elemental, and here's yeah, why. He because no tanks. No, because the Fire Elemental wants to solo tank the Scorpion King and kill it. Yeah. And the Pilgrim also wants to do that. And those, but he could this... maybe like put the Pilgrim in the split or something crazy? Yeah, but it's not amazing. I think what you do is you just add like another Infiltrator and boost it. Uh... I, I quite like this positioning though, because like this it should tank the split after the Peewee dies. And he's got some yeah. pretty solid single target magic damage. Yeah, it all comes down to whether he can kill the boss quickly. Uh, you just need to add enough to kill the Scorpion on 5. You don't go full suicide. No, but it oh, dies before too, it gets it second heal. Much. Yeah, that's actually really bad. You need that second heal value. It's so big. Uh, he's Maybe. killing some, but it's just not enough. And meanwhile, Flight is not covering his teammate. Did receive 80 Mythium, so expect him to push two workers. Yeah, but you Shadow know, we saw, it, we saw it last that. game, right? Wave 4. Papai gets the big send, leaks. His yeah. teammate does not cover. This game. Wave 5, Papai gets the big send. Teammate does not cover. And this yeah, makes and it a lot worse. So much king damage as well. Like, yeah. Look if at you this. Get, yeah. If you get a big send and you leak, it's not the end of the world if you have workers. And Papai had decent workers. Yeah. But you really need your teammate to cover. But Flight TV is going for a bit of a what we call a Steeny build. Because he has only DPS units apart from no, one he's crusher got, that he's does. Got a tank. Yeah, one tank. One tank. He's not fat, he's just a little bony. <laughs> yeah, and that's <laughs> that's why it's not enough tank value. <laughs> Alright, so a lizard resend from Quacker. Flight should be able to hold this, and Papai boosts again. I mean, Papai with that value should be able to hold this here. Oh, no, 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 no! Uh oh, no! uh oh! No! Uh oh, and he uh, still didn't get the second heal off from his thing. This is a big uh, leak from Papai. Uh oh, flight built his loose. 80 no. flight. How do you uh, leak this flight? It's a lizard. Come on. Uh, oh no. Oh no. Oh. Uh, yeah, this this is starting to spiral again for Papai and flight. Like, it's pretty much following the pattern from game number one. At least this time, Flight has a lot of workers, so he is leading the game in that, in that sense. And there is a big send, so... Two yeah, brutes, but... snail... Oh, wow. Yeah, Quacker is easy holding with the Vulcan cannon on wave seven. And Flight is going to be on value. If he wants to be really safe, he's going to sell the flower for a bunk. Yeah. He has done that in the past, but I don't think he will here because his teammate is safe. And with two more peewees, I don't think he's necessarily leaking too much. He also doesn't have too many tanks. Or is he going to stim? No, he the send is not that massive, to be honest, from yeah. fight. It's only a 180. Like, there's no... It's not like there's an ogre or a mimic or something like that, you know? Yeah, and, you know, flight is 600 value for wave 7 now. He's probably leaking the income lizard. Or maybe he holds, but... He's, it's very hard for him to recover if there are no massive leaks on Quacker yeah. and Shadow. And Shadow and will, will leak, be. but he's not on fire this time around. Yeah. 
And you're fine with this leak if you're Shadow. Yeah, like, there's two broods. That's 47% against a 180 cent. Like, Shadow is very happy with himself there. Now pushing up to 10 workers. Yeah, Flight is on 12 workers, which is a very aggressive push, which is probably what he needs to do to come back into the game. But now he's forced to income send to catch up yeah, on yeah. value. And I think that uh, Shadow and Quacker will use this opportunity now that they don't have any pressure on themselves to save and probably go for a kill oh, or even no. work and damage. Flight's building the Cursed Casket here on 8. That's going to just ruin him on 9. Yep. I think we're looking... And, you know, um, Papai is also very weak on 9 and 10. So I don't think that they will be able to hold well enough yeah. on Wave 9 to really continue the game. And this was a full send as well from Flight, spending all of his Mythium here. Shadow's obviously going to hold against it. And yeah, they don't even have to send 9 if they don't want to. They could just go straight 10, even though Flight has the Daphne there. I think Papaya is just so weak there. And of course, the all of the gold put into that Cage of Pain is just dead value on 10. So but they do go yeah. for a 9 send, and I think this is just still going to be bad enough for Flight and Papaya. The Flight now needs to sell this. He doesn't, though, but he has Gate. How does he not just sell the thing and build a Gate? Uh, maybe he does not know that Gate is the best unit in the game for Wave 9. I mean, hmm. These probably have more like effective HP on the Wave, to be honest, because he doesn't have any other tanks, so like the Gate is never going to get its full 5 summons out. So maybe it's okay? I don't know. Harden, Papai! Harden! Harden! No. Oh. no. No Harden, no Orchid boost. This is going to be... Yeah, a bit rough. A little bit rough. Yeah. Castle is good. He's going to get a second heal off, right? No. No. Castle is good if you win before wave 10, right? I, th I think so, yeah. Right? Like, Castle is meant to give you the early game boost, right? Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Really making use of the early game boost here by Quacker. Yeah. Um, Solid castle performance there. Quacker really showing us all how it's done. Yeah. Even if they don't die here, which they do, by the way, they definitely <laughs> die here. But even if they don't, like the worker situation is just unwinnable for Shadow and Quacker. Yeah. Or, or unless. Or unless. No. Oh. <laughs> it looks oh. like you survived there. <laughs> Shadow oh. and Quacker once again winning the 50-50, killing yeah. the enemy king. Victory Getting wave in. nine this time. Incredibly lucky, honestly. Yeah. Okay, so fair play, Shadow and Quacker. Nice commanding 2-0 there. Yep. Yeah. And this was a quick one. So if we just scroll back through some of the waves quickly, we can see wave 5, Papai leaked. Not too bad, honestly, against the 120 send, but Flight wasn't able to cover. Wave 6 was the real killer. Like, wave 5, okay, because they were kind of starving you on there, so you expect to leak. But wave 6 was just, you can't afford to leak back to back like that. Um, and the 80% as well on Papaya was just too much. Like, he was on value there, so the 80% leak was just... It's just way too much. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm trying to handle some uh, mod, mod stuff real quick. Okay, sure. Just, just keep talking. So they were able to get a bit of a leak on Shadow on 7, but it really wasn't enough. So the 180 send there, just... They needed way more, basically. And then the income resend just gives them a free reign. And we see these 200 plus sends on 9 just closing out the game. So very, very solid play there for Shadow and Quacker. Winning 2-0 and moving on to round 2 in the Nova Cup. Well played, those guys. So let me...